On July 27th, around 5.50 p.m., J.D. Youngin was ambushed while sitting on the front porch of his mother's home. Five men, armed with automatic weapons, pulled into their driveway and opened fire, spraying bullets everywhere. With him was his dad, who attempted to shoot back, but he too was struck with two bullets to the arm. Before Jay could find safety, he was hit eight times and collapsed to the ground. His five assassins sped off while he was left lying in the driveway in critical condition. Police began receiving calls about shots in the area and sent paramedics, but it was already too late. J.D. Youngin was pronounced dead five hours later at just 24 years old. The motive behind his killing is still in question, but here's what we do know. Investigators have spent the past 24 hours trying to put all the pieces together in a double shooting there. The family of the victim, Javoria Scott, known as J.D. Youngin, they say that telling us the motive for that violence was retaliation. They're also saying that the stage name J.D. Youngin was just 24 years old. In his very short music career, he was really able to make a name for himself, not just in his hometown here in Bogalusa, but also the music industry. 23 me everything to me, right? So the normal to me, everything to me, so it's like forever. It's like a lifestyle, so this shit like forever to me. I ask the Lord to forgive me for sinning. Rest three shit, I don't do no pretending. I try to go get the bag every minute. J.D. Youngin came from the small city of Bogalusa, Louisiana, about an hour and a half from Baton Rouge and only an hour from New Orleans. Poverty and gang culture play a large part in the surrounding area, and it's on these same streets where he would get his start. Rapping was something Jay didn't do until his best friend, FG Famous, got him into it. They would write songs in class and even made their first music videos together. Throughout high school, they made a few songs and had a couple features from other Louisiana artists, which only helped bring more attention to his name. His first mixtape even had a song with NBA Youngboy, an early sign of his success to come in the next few years. But his big break would come just two years later in 2018 with the song Interstate. Interstate would gain over 4 million views its first month and caught the attention of media outlets like XXL. They were considering him as one of the artists to make the front cover for the 2018 year, but he was left out, something XXL would regret in a matter of months. After hearing the song Elimination off his next mixtape, Universal would end up signing him for an undisclosed amount. This was the song that introduced a lot of people to his music. Jay had gained tremendous success very quickly and he was climbing the ladder, but around this time he started to attract a lot of negative media too. Until this point, he had managed to stay out of trouble and even spoke in interviews about never getting arrested. But with a large target on his back now, he found himself in back-to-back -back arrests. But I'm still involved in the streets right now too. You know where I live at right now, where I'm still living at? In my city right now, I still ain't left my city. I'm still doing my shit. In 2019, he was scheduled to perform at Ruling Loud Miami, but the morning of, police arrested Jay and several others. Loaded guns, drug paraphernalia, and over $20,000 cash were found on him. Because of this, he missed his opportunity to perform in front of his biggest crowd yet. On top of it, allegations of domestic violence from his pregnant girlfriend were happening around the same time, and another woman said she had bruises and scars that he left from his attacks. However, during all of this, Jay still released his most successful project yet, Misunderstood, and the song 23 Island was so popular it pushed him to the brink of becoming a superstar and gave him his first platinum plaque. But his ties to the streets were without a doubt starting to hold him back. In September of 2021, with shock and without warning, the internet would learn that he was arrested and charged with accessory to second degree murder, a very serious charge. This was discovered after paperwork for a $170,000 bond was leaked and people began to ask questions. Almost a year before his arrest, a shooting had occurred at a large birthday bash where a 21-year-old female unfortunately lost her life. A group of men armed with automatic weapons fired shots into the crowd of people and fled the scene. It would take almost a year for investigators to gather all five of the suspects, and among those named was a rapper named 700 Jeezy. He was from a different set than Jay, but they ultimately were on the same team and had the same enemies. During the investigation, police discovered that 700 GZ fled the state to Texas with the help of none other than Jay the Youngin. Although he bonded out for this, he still had to spend eight months behind bars after police found a firearm on him in a traffic stop, compromising his freedom and putting his career on pause. On June 16, 2022, he was released from prison, and within a few days, he was back to dropping music. 
While his freedom was celebrated, his enemies had also taken notice of his release and were already making plans. They scouted him out for a few weeks and it was known that he spent a lot of time at his mom's house. That's where they decided to make their move if they could guarantee he was there. Luckily for them, he drove a baby blue Corvette which made him an easy target to track. And that's exactly what they did. According to reports, his final moments went like this. Around 5.50 p.m., Jay, his father, and three other guests were sitting on the front porch of his mother's house. Shortly after, a black SUV with the lights off drove past and made a right turn toward an alley behind the home. Two men hopped out, fully armed, and snuck around the side of the house on foot, while the SUV spun the block and came back around the front. Three men then hopped out into the driveway, opening fire with automatic weapons. His dad fired shots back, but was hit in his arm twice and disarmed. Jay tried to make a run for the door to take cover, but was caught in the crossfire as the other two men came out of the alley shooting as well. After being struck at least eight times, his body laid in the driveway while his five killers drove off. Initially, authorities didn't identify who the two victims were, but word on the street spread quick and not long after, social media was flooded with the news. Blog pages were quick to pronounce his passing despite his sister saying he was in fact still alive, which at the time was true. But five hours later at 11 p.m., the Bogalusa PD posted this message to Facebook. We can now identify the victims as Javarius Scott, AKA Jay the Youngin, and a close family member, Kenyatta Scott Sr. We can also confirm Javarius has died as a result of his injuries. Jay Youngin was murdered in his own city, a place that's supposed to show him the most love. Within 50 minutes of his passing, retaliation from his friends already began. FG Famous released a tribute song to Jay before he too was arrested for going on a revenge shooting. There hasn't been a clear motive besides the obvious fact that Jay had beef with other gangs in Louisiana. He was rich, successful, and certain people wanted him gone. But there is one other theory going around that doesn't involve jealousy or hate. It's possible Jay didn't have people looking for him that day. In fact, he may not have been the intended target at all, but his dad instead. His dad spent a large part of his life in and out of jail for some serious crimes. He's been registered as a sex offender three different times and was listed on the local news in 2021 for something similar. If someone was looking to take revenge for something his dad did in the past, it's possible J.D. Youngin was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. But only time will tell us what really happened. Long live 23.